Hello and welcome to Miss Pam Reads. Today we are reading Maggie and Milo by Julie Brenning, illustrated by Priscilla Burris. Maggie and Milo by Julie Brenning, illustrated by Priscilla Burris. This is Maggie. Maggie is an excellent adventurer, a pretty good songwriter, a bit of a scientist, and Milo's very best friend. This is Milo. Milo is a dog. And this is the awesome package Maggie's grandma sent. It had all the necessities for a frog hunt, boots, and knowledge. Country dogs, like Milo, don't wear boots. That night, Maggie told Milo, we need to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow, we hunt frogs. The next morning, Maggie pulled on her new blue boots, which were perfect for this kind of adventure, and her favorite dress, which was just plain perfect. And she was off. Well, almost. Maggie ran back to the bathroom to brush her teeth, which she had completely forgotten to do. At breakfast, Maggie handed a note to her brother that said, Please keep the chit-chat to a minimum. I'm in a hurry. Her brother rolled his eyes, which is apparently how 12-year-olds communicate. Maggie focused. Eating quickly requires serious concentration. Breakfast took exactly 11 and 3 quarters bites. Then she was off, for real this time. I'm a frog hunter, shouted Maggie. Stopping at the edge of the world, she called, Milo! I am a frog hunter, and he is Milo. Together, Maggie and Milo ran down the hill, past the chicken coop, through the valley of the ferns, and all the way to the pond where Maggie tested the waterproofness of her blue boots. After, after sufficient stomping, she announced, Milo, my feet are perfectly dry. That's important. Grandma always says, wet feet make for a very long day, which is true. Wet feet do make for a long day. Maggie stood in the water. She waited for a frog. Maggie waited a million minutes. Nothing happened. This was boring. Boring in all capital letters. B-O-R-I-N-G. Boring. Maggie sang a song. She sang about frogs and waiting and blue boots. Milo wandered off. So far, this was not working out as planned. Milo, called Maggie. He wasn't there. Milo. Maggie tried very hard not to think about losing Milo or being alone. In front of her, the cattails moved. Milo, is that you? she asked, trying to sound brave. Slowly, Maggie pulled apart the cattails. And there in the muck was Milo and a frog. Milo had found a frog. <laughs> Maggie reached down and caught that frog. Hi, I'm Maggie and this is Milo. You will be called Alexander. Welcome to our pond. Gently, Maggie placed Alexander back into the water. She had to be very careful. Frogs are terribly squirmy. Milo, you are so smart, squealed Maggie. This is a true statement. Border collies are very smart. Milo barked, wagged his tail, and ran to another spot. Maggie followed close behind, and there in the muck, was another frog. Maggie named the second frog Benjamin, the third one Cooper, and the fourth one Daniel, C 
see the pattern? Oh, do you see the pattern? First one was A, Alexander, B, Benjamin, C, Cooper, D, Daniel, hmm. <laughs> After meeting Oliver, which is way down the alphabet, Maggie realized all the frogs they had found were boys. That was absurd. The world does not need any more boys, Maggie proclaimed. She found Princess Penelope under a lily pad, holding her newest catch. Maggie said, Milo, there is no way I can think of a girl's name that begins with the letter Q. So Maggie and Milo rested. It's not easy work, this frog hunting. As Milo slept, Maggie sang a song, a quiet end of the day kind of song. Afterward, Maggie and Milo walked home through the Valley of the Ferns, past the chicken coop, and all the way back up the hill. Just as the sun was setting, they heard the most marvelous music. Side by side, they sat on the edge of the world, just listening to the frogs say good night. When the last note faded, Maggie said, Milo, that was the very best day. I cannot wait for our next adventure. The end. Thank you for joining me for Miss Pam Reads. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you'll get an update when a new story posts. Bye.